All right, so many of you have been asking if we could do a bit of a deep dive on the activity matrix to give an idea of how we at Santamon find the opportunities, those coins that are seeing super hot anomalies in their network all of a sudden or super cold anomalies. They can mean very different things, obviously. Now, first and foremost, what we're trying to do by using a model like this is identify which coins are seeing large spikes in network activity compared to their usual amount of activity. If they are having less activity than usual, then they are more likely to continue doing the same thing they have been doing. If they're going down in direction, then a cold network would indicate that's not likely to change anytime soon. If it's flat and it's cold, it's likely to stay flat. Now, if it's very hot compared to, or I should say the, the price is moving up compared to other coins out there, and for some reason the network activity is still cold, that's a great sign because it means that the crowd has not caught on to that news yet and the price can keep going up without much resistance. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, if a coin is going down in value compared to the rest of the altcoin markets, and suddenly you see a lot of hot activity, that's a great bottom signal, a good time historically to buy because it likely has to do with the whales and a lot of institutional money suddenly getting pumped into that altcoin because they probably see it as, as a discount themselves. And when a whale buys the bottom, you better bet that that's a good uh, sign that the coin is going to turn around in most cases. Nothing is a guarantee on this. If the coin is flat and the network is suddenly getting hot, that generally can be a good sign too. Uh, oftentimes, if it's kind of a mid-range altcoin that's just been floating, uh, not overperforming or underperforming, good sign that it might pick up some steam. Now, this is the one that a lot of people get messed up. If a coin is moving up a lot, if the coin has just been on an absolute tear, say, for example, we look at Civic right here. I'm going to zoom in for a moment. This square right here, see how it's <coughs> full of, <laughs> excuse me, full of red squares as opposed to just yellows and blues and just random ones? Well, that's because the red is indicating that all of these metrics, active addresses, network growth, whale transactions, 100K to a million dollar tier holders, social dominance, exchange inflow, outflow, mean dollar age, and age consumed. Every one of these right now on the current day, which is what the horizontal, or I'm sorry, the uh, vertical axis means here with Monday, October 7th being the latest close. That means that all of these metrics are seeing above average activity on civics network. The parentheses number, by the way, is uh, the market cap rank. So Civic is the 266th mar market cap rank at this time. Changes all the time though. Anyways, the reason this is actually a bad thing if you are holding Civic right now or you're thinking of buying it is typically if the network suddenly gets super hot and the price has already been soaring compared to the rest of the markets, it's a top signal most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time. And if you're in the probabilities, which you should be in crypto trading, since nothing's a certainty and you can only rely on probabilities and what is the most likely outcome, then this would tell you that there's a lot of active addresses and network growth, for example, because retail traders are FOMOing in. And then there's a lot of whale transactions because large leveraged whales out there and people with high capital are taking profit right now. Whales aren't known for making a huge buy on an asset that has already been, been outperforming the rest of the markets and is up 82% in the past 90 days, 74% in the past 30 days, 48% in the past week. And even in the past 24 hours, the fact that this cell is green indicates it's outperforming most just by being up 1% in the past 24 hours. So my point is, whales are not known for pouring in more money to coins that are already on an absolute tear 
unless there's some anomaly or, or breaking news out there that causes them to just feel that confident about a coin that has already mathematically looked like it's run its course a bit. So Civic would be a classic top signal in this case because the price, which is in green on the short, mid, and long-term intervals is way above water and the network is super hot. Now, on the other hand, let me zoom out a little so we can see the entire thing here. I know it's a ton of colors, but the more you look at it, the more intuitive it kind of gets. A good uh, like potential buy, and this is not an investment advice whatsoever, would be a setup sort of like Audius right now. And it could be a very short term rise, but according to this model, it's seeing a significant amount of active addresses, whale transactions, the 100K to million dollar tier holders are accumulating fast, uh, social dominance is up significantly, and they're even seeing a lot of coins moving off exchanges um, according to these squares over here, and dormant coins have been moving. So with that in mind, we look at how the price performance has been, and it's a bunch of like yellow green over the past day, yellow over the past week. It's actually dark orange over the past 30 days. It's exactly what you think it means. Green means it's outperforming during that time frame. Orangish red or red means it's underperforming compared to the other coins during that time. So it's actually one of the worst performers among these assets in the past 30 days. And over the past 90 days, it's about average. That's why it's showing in yellow here. But that's a good thing because we can now see that Audius is suddenly seeing super hot network activity despite being completely unassuming in terms of its price performance. So that would be a good candidate. Then we have something, for example, like basic, atten uh, basic attention token, which is mostly blue, indicating that its middle of the road performance is likely to continue or even potentially start to fade and, and start to be an underperformer. Uh, it's, it's not as good of a signal. If you're seeing a really blue label like this, like Thala or like 0x, but you would, you would rather see more hot activity, of course, but the exception would be if prices are already taking off like they have been for Civic. This shows there's a ton of FOMO. So that's kind of the recap on this view. Now we also have an anomalies tab that kind of simplifies things and just says, okay, over the past 90 days for each of these coins, which days have seen a top three or bottom three day recently? So we're, we have the same view. We're looking at the past week of data. And anytime we see a blue square, like we did for active addresses and network growth for zero X, that means that it was a bottom three day. So it's seeing significantly low utility and addresses firing off or being created for zero X right now. If we see a red square, for example, like Marlin here, a pretty obscure altcoin, that means that it just had a top three day in terms of age consumed. Um, and you get the idea. So this kind of just simplifies it. If you don't want to just really squint and look at each square and find the, the opportunities. Um, of course, you can look at the color of the label, which summarizes what the latest day is when averaging all those metrics together. Or you can just go to the, sorry, the anomalies tab here and look at the latest day and see what anomalies might be occurring. So Pepe, for example, hasn't had any anomalies on the current day. Fela has been quite cold, which is why you see a couple of blue squares. You get the idea. So this is more of just a simplified version of the detailed tab. Now, skipping ahead to what I already spoiled is the view I use the most when I'm trying to find uh, ideas to post about, write insights about, inform you guys about when I make my videos or, or write insights on insights.sentiment.net. This is the leaderboard for all you can think of for this model. It has the leaders over the past one day, the leader, leaders over the past seven days, 
leaders over the past 30 days, and leaders over the past 90 days. In fact, to separate this, since the one day has so many that just show plus 1%, going to add a little decimal there. That'll help me out. So obviously you can find the best performing price leaders. You can also find the worst performing price leaders un under these timeframes too. So merit circle is among the worst among the 110 or so assets that I have here in the past one day. It's also the worst in the past seven days. Maker is the worst in the past 30 days, and Maker is also the worst in the past 90 days. So that's something to keep in mind. But this isn't just about price. You can find best and worst price performers in a lot of places, including Santiment, of course. But what I think is most useful is finding which assets are having the most anomalous day for each category. Whether it's active addresses, where we see Civic right at the top, showing a one here. And what one means is that it's having its first most active day in terms of addresses, at least in the past three months, because that's the midterm timeframe that we're using as a baseline for what each coin's hot versus cold range is, right? So the fact that it's having a one here indicates out of all of the past 90 days, this is the highest we've seen for Civic. You can also see Civic as the top anomalous day for network growth with a two here. That means it's had the second most uh, new addresses created, which is what network growth means in the past 90 days. Pax Gold is the highest in terms of whale transactions. Civic once again is seeing a ton of accumulation from key stakeholders. That's interesting to me considering it's already been rising as much as it has been. Social dominance. Interestingly, we have Tether and the graph both showing the highest proportion of discussions related to them versus all the other coins in crypto. So whatever's going on in the news there, these two are standing out as big discussion points. Exchange flow. This means that Audius is having the most outflow uh, the highest outflow day, I should say, over the past 90 days. StormX right behind it seeing the second highest outflow. And by the way, for this particular category, BlueZell, for example, is showing a 92. Technically, it's on a three-month span, so sometimes there will be like 92 or 93 days between uh, those three months. But this is the 92nd out of probably 92 possible days for inflow versus outflow, meaning it's seeing a ton of coins inflowing to the exchanges right now. That's not a good sign. It usually indicates a sell-off is happening. Mean dollar invested age, once again, Civic at the top, seeing its second highest day. Age consumed, we then have Holo, Marlin, Pax Gold. Interestingly, USD coin, the second largest stable coin in crypto, is having a huge age consumed day. I find that quite interesting. But this cat, this one here is probably the one you'll find yourself spending the most time on. It's simply averaging the ranks of all of the eight categories together for every single coin. And it's showing what that average comes to when you blend it all together. So you saw a lot of ones and twos for Civic as of the, the previous day that just ended. If you blend those all together... It's at a 4.5, which is super duper low. You rarely see anything below like a 10. So the fact that Civic is showing a 4.5 means almost every category is at the highest point it's been in the past 90 days. And this confirms it. You can see nothing but dark, deep red here, uh, indicative of a very hot network right now. So that would simply give you a shortcut to finding just which coins are the hottest right now. And then in order to get context, so you don't have to keep going back and forth between this tab and the data tab or the leaderboard tab, you've got it right here. Um, and you'll, you'll quickly kind of have this blend into your memory. The first percentage is the one day performance versus everything else. Think about how you uh, how you rank on a test back in high school or something. I know not everyone, especially if you're not from the US, it might be different. 
But in the US, they often say, all right, you finished in the 95th percentile. That means you were better than 19 out of 20 students on that test, right? So this works the same way. 99% means there was probably only one other coin that had a better performance in the first in the past 24 hours uh, than Civic. The next one, exact same thing, except it's one week. And over the past week, Civic is the best performer among these 110 assets, meaning it has 100%. It's ranking literally in the 100th percentile for performances over the past week. Same thing, best performer over the past uh, 30 days as well. And then it looks like it's one of the worst performers. I don't know. See, that's strange. I, I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm going to have to check on that. Theoretically, it's supposed to show 100% there too because it looks like it's the best performer over the past 90 days as well. But you get the idea. There, there might be an occasional kink, and I'll probably work on correcting this right after I make the video, but you get the basic understanding. I know that it's a... A uh, very customized way of looking at markets. And I made it admittedly with myself in mind to be able to find where the anomalies are in the markets on a daily basis. So it's quicker for me to find things to write about, make insights about. And from a trading perspective, you can use it the same way. Instead of like literally going to sentiment and, or, or sand base, I should say and going to every single coin and like checking out, you know, even with a nice template, like my main template that I use for this week in crypto, it's, it's a pain having to go through every single metric and seeing how they're performing and then going, okay, nothing really going on with Dogecoin. And then maybe I'll check on Cardano next and, you know, maybe I'll find something useful here, but you get the idea. This is just so much quicker to quickly have a resource to show you where the opportunities lie or the profit taking uh, you know danger zones lie uh, on any given day and uh, i'm really curious what you guys think about this of course the assets are customizable so when you make a copy of this using the link that's in the bio make sure you are uh, if you're trying to change the assets Use ERC-20s only or some exceptions like top caps such as Bitcoin, Cardano, XRP, uh, Bitcoin Cash, and uh, I think a couple others. But for the most part, this is intended for ETH-based assets, which is, of course, the, the most active ecosystem in crypto. So you've still got a wide variety of coins you can choose from. Um, I put the asset list together about a year ago, taking the... Uh, top ERC 20s within the top 500 market caps. That's changed a little bit, of course, over the past year. So you'll see some that are outside the top 500 now, like Origin, or even some that are in the 2000s because they absolutely cratered, uh, or they, they had a merge like Ocean Protocol, right? So some things will be slightly dated, but it's still very relevant. And all the big coins that you would expect are here. And any questions you have, let me know. Uh, also, check out the article that I wrote about this when it was released about a year ago because it gives a nice written explanation of how it can be used. And I look forward to hearing from you guys. Take care. Thanks for watching.